So I hope that I can inspire someone that's, you know, listening or watching this right now to be like, it's okay to speak your truth. It's okay to step into who you are. The only person who can ever judge you is yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, no one else can do it unless you allow them to do it. Welcome to the Thoughts on Purpose podcast. We have an incredible guest today, the amazing, beautiful Stephanie Z. Steph is a global transformation coach and speaker. Uh, Steph supports people break through, transform their lives, gain massive clarity and momentum in their lives, really going from low vibe to the high vibe. And uh, I, I love Steph's energy. Um, we were talking earlier, Steph. The things I admire most about you that, you know, I've got to know you for over the past few months as we've been on different calls and different courses together, your amazing energy, um, your incredible sense of intuition, your ability to hold space for people as well. I've seen you on different calls where you've just had to step up as a leader and you kind of seem to me to be the first person to put your hand up and step in, which is awesome. And I really admire all this. So I'm so excited for you to be here and excited to see where this conversation goes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, my great pleasure. Um, so, Steph, as I was saying earlier as well, I really don't know any of your story. I've never really got to know you on that, on that deeper level, um, apart from the fact that you are an amazing coach now. But that probably tells me and hints at the fact that you've probably overcome some challenges in your own life. Um, I don't know if I'm right in saying that at all. Yes. Um, but I'd love to hear a bit about why why you've chosen to do this work and why you've stepped into this space. Cool. So I'll probably say let's, let's start with my story because that's probably going to give everyone a really good understanding about why I do what I do. Mm. Um, and, you know, um, as I've gone along this journey, I've started to really understand that a lot of us have a very similar story um, just in different aspects of our lives. So, you know, um, throughout high school, um, I think like most teenagers, I was bullied a lot um, and that bullying really, really went deep for me. Um, and I had a lot of, um, wounds, um, that really I held on to for a long time. And so throughout my, my years in high school, I, I did often feel not accepted. I did feel often, you know, rejected. I didn't feel like I fitted in and it really brought my self-esteem, you know, um, on a deep level, um, down low, um, on the external, um, I was already always a very happy and positive person. And looking back now, I can understand why I was picked on. Um, I was always on stage singing, dancing, acting, all of these types of things. Um, however, um, fast forward a couple of years and being very vulnerable um, and transparent, I went through a drug phase, um, you know, when I was in my really late teens, early 20s. Um, you know, lots of people I know have also been through that. Um, it's grown, it's made me who I am. Um, but you know, I was partying, you know, three nights a week. Like I would do what's called three day benders where I wouldn't even sleep for three days. I remember like I, when I finished high school, I actually didn't end up going to university straight away. Um, and I ended up having like a year off where I was working. And then I remember one Monday morning, I was at this beach house partying and it was a Monday morning. And I remember we had been, you know, partying the night before and and I remember seeing all these runners, like, you know, like, like what I do now running. And I remember just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what a freaking loser you are right now. Like, I cannot believe what you have been doing with your life. And that was kind of like my first, you know, aha moment for me to snap awake. And what I was also doing is I was about to go into university. So I was doing a program before I even got accepted into my degree. So I was like, I cannot believe that you're even doing this. Um, and then fast forward a couple of months, I sort of was doing the same thing again. And I remember being, you know, 8 a.m. Monday morning in my math class still off my head from the night before, crazy, 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 being very vulnerable here. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, I remember the lecturer looking at me and I was like, oh my God, I think he probably knows. And I was like, you are such a loser. Like, why are you doing this to yourself? Like you're here to actually get into university mm -hmm. and yet you're screwing up your life right now. So that was like a huge, like moment in my life, a big wake up call. And I sort of stopped sort of doing that. Um, which was a good thing. And then, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, once I finished uni, I, I moved away and I ended up coming across this book by this amazing lady called Louise Hay. Mm. Um, some of you may or may not know her. She's a beautiful soul. Um, you know, uh, and Louise's book really talked about self-love, about the power of positive language and really about understanding your thoughts. And it was something that I wasn't really exposed to, you know, growing up. And it really started to make me be conscious 
uh, about, you know, the thoughts that I had and that I really didn't have a lot of self-love and the language that I was using, because language has a huge, which we can talk about, mm. the language that we use has different frequency and that can affect, you know, if we're in a low vibe or a high vibe, right, which is what I mm. teach people. Yes. Um, and then a couple of years on after that, you know, I, like all of us, you go through different phases with friends and working and, you know, um, I ended up I, I, like, I think from being bullied for so long, um, I always said to myself, like, I never want anyone to be made to feel the way that I've been made to feel. So on the outer, so left out, you know, like really hurt. So I've been someone who's always tried to bring people together and be someone who's always tried to be empathetic and kind and loving. And I'm grateful for those experiences because I really believe that the reason I am a good, kind hearted, loving person is because I've been on the opposite end. Um, and so I've really tried to embody that. And so I do believe that that was exactly what I needed for me to step into what I do now, because, you know, being a coach holding space, you've got to care about people. You actually have to give a shit. (laughs) Like you literally do. Um, just being super transparent, right? Yeah, I appreciate and that. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and and also at the same time, so you don't have judgment, right? So, like, you know, I've I've done things in my life, gosh, that's only touching on the iceberg. I'm no perfect human and I'm not going to pretend to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's more power in being vulnerable and authentic and real and yes. knowing yeah. we're all the same. Um, yeah. So I hope that I can inspire someone that's, you know, listening or watching this right now to be like, it's okay to speak your truth. It's okay to step into who you are. The only person who can ever judge you is yourself, right? Um, no one else can do it unless you allow them to do it. But um, yeah, fast forwarding in a couple of years. So in about 2017, so um, I, uh, my dad actually had a, a stroke and ended up having three strokes and now lives in a nursing home. And I ended up actually being involved in a bus accident. I was on a hen. So for some of you may know that in America, it's like a doe show, like a opposite to a bucks kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew in my mind that I wasn't really meant to be there. Like, do you ever have this like inner knowing, like, you know, this, I don't know. You just, I just knew I wasn't really meant to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And we were on these hands and we're on this bus and I was like, Oh my goodness. And I was not wanting to drink alcohol. And I was going through this phase of trying to not drink, but then I'd just get pulled back into the old pattern. Can anyone relate here? What I'm saying, mm. you know, there's like this ping pong match between yourself. You're like, Oh my goodness. Mm. Um, and so I was on this bus and I'm not even kidding you. Cause we talk about intuition. I call it like your inner voice, your higher self, we can talk about that shortly. Yeah, I love well, the that. dark dog and the white dog call it the same thing. Yeah. The angel, the devil, the yeah. positive, the negative. Yes. The whole way on the bus, all the way up to the Hunter Valley. So I'm from a place in, in Australia called Newcastle. Hunter Valley is about 45 minutes away, wine country. There were seatbelts on the bus. And the whole way up there, I'm not even kidding you, I could hear in my head, Steph, put your seatbelt on. If something happens, you're going out the window. Mm. Steph, put your seatbelt on. Is that, and I'm like, what is this like voice? I'm like, Pfft what's going on here? Like, and I was like, had been having a few drinks. So I was like ignoring that inner voice. Mm. And it was the reason why I think it was happening is because I knew I was meant to be doing what I'm doing now, but I was so scared. I was like, so worried about what my friends were going to think of me. Who am I to, to be speaking about this stuff? Mm. You know, like, am I going to be judged? Am I going to be criticized? Like what's everyone going to think about me? You know, I think everyone can relate to that. Am I even good enough? Like who's going to want to even care about what I have to say? Yes. Um, so all of this was going on for me on a deep subconscious level, which I think all human beings definitely have. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what ended up happening on this bus was this bus driver just slammed on the brakes out of nowhere at like 80 kilometers an hour. Um, I think, don't quote me on this, if any of our American friends, I think it might be 40 miles per hour. Maybe don't quote me on that though. It's fast, basically. It's not mm-hmm. super, super fast, but it's fast. Yeah. Um, and I was in the front seat. I was the only one who was in a front seat and I was like a meter between me and the dashboard, the front of the bus, Mm -hmm. every other person had a seat, right? And what ended up actually happening is the bus driver slammed on the brakes and the only thing that saved me was that I was facing sideways, looking towards the back of the bus. So I was talking to everyone, handing out drinks and food. Mm -hmm. So because I was sort of, so everyone that's listening, so sitting sideways on the seat and facing towards the back of the bus. So I wasn't looking at the front. And what happened when he slammed on the brakes is my body naturally flung backwards. So my face was facing the back of the bus and my back of my head and my back was facing the front. So I literally went flying back and 
you know, God, source, creator, the universe, energy, whatever you believe in. I'm sure that you believe in some form of, form of a higher power. Mm-hmm. Somehow my neck and my head perfectly rolled on the dashboard. Like oh, that curve God. that it has. Yes. Yes. You are, you are very lucky. My God. What are the chances? Yeah. Very slim. Like it. There's I, a whole I just, windshield there. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I know I was being looked after and that was another thing that made me believe in, you know, that there is a high power looking after us, that voice that kept trying to warn me. And it was like, I got flung. And then I remember laying on the floor. Like, I'm like, if I had been facing forwards, I think I probably would have hurt myself even more. I, I would have either gone, I think forwards out the window and the bus would have just drove over me. I don't even really want to think what would have happened, but mm. I remember laying on the floor and I literally thought I was a quadriplegic. I was like, I've snapped my neck. Like I was like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to walk again. Like that was just the first thought that I had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I was like, God, and I didn't even really believe in, like I believed in the universe and I was like, you know, and I just prayed and I was like, God, I promise if I can feel like I was like, I will do every single thing in my power to bring my message to this world. And I will never, ever stop trying and until like I've achieved it. Mm-hmm. And then I could feel, and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, and that was a part of, you know, like six months of depression. I went into a depression after that. Um, I was definitely traumatized, um, from that. Um, and that was my wake up call. So I talk about this analogy called a feather brick in a truck. So the feathers like, you know, okay. Like recently I broke my wrist and tore a ligament. <laughs> Everyone's like, geez, Steph. <laughs> everything happens for a reason That's and right. i kept spilling glasses in my house spilling water spilling over a vase of flowers i got my sling caught in you know out t- through a two liter milk in my in my kitchen and i like kept doing this i'm like what is going on and it wasn't until i got the message that i needed to slow down and that there was an underlying reason about why i was doing that that i stopped doing that so that's kind of like what I call the feather or like if you get a parking fine and like you're trying to rush, that's what you call the feather. Mm -hmm. The brick is like, um, I describe me actually breaking my wrist recently and, um, me being flung in the bus. That's like the brick, which is like something dramatic that happens. that forces you to stop and wake up. Yes. And the truck analogy is like when something like, you know, really severely happens, like, you know, you are involved in a really bad car accident you're in hospital or, um, you know, like, uh-huh. yeah, it's kind of like different stages. It's I like pay that. attention to the signs. Do you I know what I'm that. talking about? I do. I do. So the, f- the feather would be the more, the more gentle nudges. The brick is the more like, you get you get a good taste of of, of something that's <laughs> something something's up, but the the truck is like it's it's like a full uh, like a like would call like a T bone in a car accident literally it like knocks you off the path of, of what you were doing. Yeah, correct. So my dad, I love my dad, but my dad's strokes was his truck, mm-hmm. um, and he had two choices in life recently to sort of go back into living on his own or going into a nursing home, and he chose the nursing home. Yeah. Um, and you know, with, with that, um, you know, the universe gave him, God gave him two choices and he chose that choice. Right. So we all have choices. So I woke up and then what happened was that led me to, I was depressed for six months dealing with my dad, not living where they were and back and forth. And then it was a very uncertain time in my life. And then me having my accident and having to heal from all that, um, and knowing the workplace that I was in, I was very successful, but I was like, it wasn't, my soul wasn't in it right anymore. Yeah. And I knew that I was meant for more. And then I went to Tony Robbins. I randomly was seeing Tony Robbins stuff on my phone. I'm sure a lot of people know him. He's an amazing soul. Mm. And I went to his event called Unleash the Power Within. Mm. And that was like the catalyst for everything. So I went to that event. I released a lot of pain. And then, you know, I signed up to all of his other programs, had to take out a loan. So I want everyone to know as well. You know, I haven't come from being given anything like most people, like I've had to work for it and I've had to, you know, take a chance. I've had to, you know, go and get loans. Like it was a $15,000 loan I took out to go to do all this stuff with Tony. Now I'm not saying people have to go and do that right now, Yeah. but it's like, you know, there is a pattern to success or there is a pattern and a pathway and you have to follow that. And you just have to realize that you're not going to get it handed to you. It takes work. It takes energy. It takes time and it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of like the catalyst. And then I went and studied things like NLP and neuro-linguistic programming. And, um, it's just, I've just been one thing after another. I've just kept growing and growing and I just haven't stopped. And I've had coaches since that 2017 that I've had the whole time. And that's also been pivotal 
Um, I did have a period where six months I didn't have a coach and I noticed I dropped. I definitely dropped. Yes. Whereas when I've had a coach, I've stayed consistent and exceeded definitely. Yep. Yep. I, I totally get what you're saying. Every time I have a coach, it's exponential growth. Like you cannot do it on your, on your own. Just that person who's, who's got your back, who sees what you can't see yep. and who holds you to that higher standard when you, you know, cause as humans, we all have our times where we, we drop off and it's game changing. I, I love that step. And thank you for your vulnerability there. I really appreciate that. Amazing. And again, that's, that really does explain why you are such a phenomenal coach now. Um, so, so much I want to ask you. I'm going to start with this though. If people are getting feather, let's say feather signs in their life right now, they're getting these little nudges, these little things, what should they do? Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're, yeah, like, you know, um, you know, if you're getting a parking fine or um, you're slipping over or you're spilling glasses all the time, or you keep repeating the same patterns, like you keep constantly, um, you know, like, uh, how do I explain this? Our belief system is created from zero to seven years of age. Mm -hmm. So when we're a child, we create our beliefs. And what happens is as, as an adult, we end up recreating those beliefs as adults what's called subconsciously. So just for everyone to understand really quickly, um, our subconscious mind is like, as an example, right now, we don't have to take a breath. We don't have to check is our heart beating. We don't have to think I'm blinking. You know, when we go to the fridge, we don't have to think extend right arm, you know, open fingers, mm -hmm. last fingers around door, pull, you yeah. know, that's what you call your subconscious mind. And that controls 95% of what we do. Mm -hmm. So we are actually on a, a program that we've conditioned ourselves to be on. Whereas our 5% of our brain is that thinking part of where we actually think we're in control. Um, but it's actually the other 95% that's, that's actually really controlling us. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when we have these belief systems of, let's say I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy or um, I'm fear of, you know, um, I want to be accepted or I'm not loved or whatever it is, which we all have. Yes. And you un when you uncover it and go deeper, 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 what happens is we recreate those belief systems. So let's say if someone's in a toxic relationship or they keep constantly attracting someone, pardon the French, who treats them like shit. Hmm. You might get into a relationship where that person treats you disrespectfully, but then what will happen is you might even attract a friend and it's just masked as a different experience. Then a friend might do the same thing or you might work in a workplace and you're working all these extra hours and they don't treat you the same. So what happens is it's just different experiences but masked as the same beliefs and it's not until you realise that there's actually core beliefs going on underneath that you will stop repeating those same patterns. So if you're getting the feather... As an example, most people know, but they choose to ignore that inner voice. It's like if you notice a pattern, stop yourself and go, what specifically, you know, right now, like, oh, what I like to do is I look like to look up, this is what I do, I Google things. Mm -hmm. So when I kept spilling stuff, I Googled, you know, like uh, I call it spiritual, spiritual meaning of spilling. Yes. And it was all about emotions and it was all linked to inner child wounds and about fathers, and that was exactly what was going on in my life. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, and again, you know, for people that are open to this, they'll, this will resonate. And for some people, this might be new and that's okay too. You know, it, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. That's what I always say. Right. Yep. Um, so looking, I like to do those types of things and also ask yourself, you know, like what could this mean? Because you usually know, mm. you know, like spilling is like emotions usually, right? That's mm -hmm. usually what it, it, emotions is. So, yeah. um, but it's those little things, you know, like um, as an example, like getting a flat tire. Um, actually, another thing that happened to me when I broke my wrist, my, sh my shower head fell off. Mm. Um, you know, like at the moment, I don't have my cast on right now, but it is broken, but um, I've <laughs> taken it off. <laughs> but I was just going to say, um, you know, I can't drive at the moment. So that what that does is it forces you to stop. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, I need to slow down. Yes. So like if you get a flat tyre, if you get a parking fine, if, you know, like um, you're trying to order Uber Eats and it's not working and it's like, why, why, maybe it's telling you you're not meant to have that because you're meant to be choosing yeah. healthy food. Yes. You know, it's like these little things, but so often we're like trying to push, push, push. Uh-huh. Does yeah, this make I sense? Love, it does. I, I love yeah. that. I, I love how you, you're so in tune with all that stuff. Um, and I see you pop, you're like always showing up in your stories. You're like, oh, I, I went to Bunnings today and bought some plants because <laughs> I, I just feel called to do it. I, I love that. And um, 
it's it's a fun way to live as well. Like it stops you being so rigid and so attached to how you think things should be because that's really where people detach from the flow. And you know, the essence of nature is a flow. Like that, that's that's the way it rolls. Okay, and when you are so rigid in what you think you should be doing all the time, um, you know, I'm all about setting goals. I'm all about having structure and discipline. All these great things, but also inviting this flow into your life is crucial. So I'm so glad mm. we're having this conversation. Mm. Absolutely. So, yeah, that that really gets leads us onto the really your 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 what you specialize in on such a high level, which is getting people from the low vibe to the high vibe. What does that even mean? <laughs> Good question. Mm. So lo- a lot of the time, so I consider a low vibe um, an energy state, let's say, like either it's a yep. low energy or a low um, frequency with our thoughts because the laws of the universe um, are, you know, um, that everything is vibrational, right? So there's always an mm. ebb and a flow and there's, there's polarity, so negative and positive. You can't have positive without negative. You can't have dark, dark without light. Yes. Um, and so the thing is, what usually keeps us on a low vibration is past hurt, mm. past wounds, which we all have, our thought patterns, our language patterns, um, you know, uh, how much we follow through on what we say we're going to do, um, the environment that we live in, the people that we hang around. Um, and also um, there's four really key, uh, kind of five actually, I should say five, So I have like a program called Vibe, which is all about going from low vibe to high vibe. Um, And basically really where it starts is, you know, like we have a week called Reset. Um, That's actually week two. But Reset is all about clearing out the old to make way for the new. Mm -hmm. So the way that I describe this is like think about like as an example, we as humans have um, positive and negative language and, and pain. So like I want you to imagine for a second and anyone, you know, at home or that's listening to this, Imagine you have a closet at home and I want you to just pretend, think about who you are as a person. You know in yourself, are you more of a, you know, pessimistic person, negative person, or are you more positive and optimistic? And there's no right or wrong, right? Mm. I've been on both sides of the fence, so be gentle with yourself. If yeah. That means there's always room for growth. Yes. But, you know, if you're someone who always is looking at the lack, always in fear, always in scarcity, it's just because of your beliefs that you've been conditioned. So it's all good. You can mm. come out of that. Mm-hmm. So imagine that you've got some negative beliefs like hanging up. We're going to call them beliefs instead of clothes. Mm-hmm. But some are like, um, you know, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, resentment, shame, judgment, right? We all have them. Yes. They're hanging up in the closet. And the other side of the closet is more positive. So like you've got, um, you know, happiness, joy, love, success, freedom, or whatever it looks like for you, abundance. Now, if we go and do a shopping spree, and we want, I want you to pretend that the closet's full to the brim, right? You cannot fit another piece of clothing in. You're like, Steph, mm-hmm. can't even fit it in. It's not going in, babe, right? Yeah. If we went and did a shopping spree and we wanted to bring in more positive emotions, right? Mm-hmm. When we get home, I'm going to ask you, Nash, what do you believe we would need to do? You've got to get rid of some of the old. Exactly. And which ones would you want to get rid of? Probably the... I don't know, the, the ones you most, I don't know, I guess you, you, you dislike the most essentially or that aren't serving you, don't make you feel good. So more of the negative. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah. But so what a lot of people don't realise is we only have a certain amount of capacity. Mm-hmm. So we have an emotional body, a mental body, a spiritual body and a physical body. And so what people don't realise is when we've had constantly in, 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 so past pain, like bullying, stuff that's happened with our families, you know, we've taken drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, um, you know, and we've like held things in, like we haven't forgiven ourselves, we haven't forgiven others, we hold on to resentment, we hold on to judgment, et cetera, et cetera, that closet starts to overfill. Mm-hmm. And what you need to do is you actually need to do what I call reset, which is clearing out the old to make way space for the new. And this is where a lot of people miss the link. Yes. Like, oh, I'll go and sign up to that program. I'll go and do this. I'll go and do that, which is amazing. But the way I describe it is like you've got a CD and you're just trying to put an old CD, sorry, a new CD over the old one. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering why, why is the new one not working? Why doesn't this stay? Like why, why do I find I keep reverting back to my old patterns and habits? It's because what you need to do is you need to fully take out the old CD, which is clearing out the closet to create space and putting the new one. And that's the link where a lot of people um, you know, there are a lot of coaches out there that do do this. There are a lot of coaches that don't do this, right? Yeah. So clearing out and making space is key. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is, you know, um, in my program, I have what's called heart set, 
soul set, mindset, and health set. Mm -hmm. So your heart set is connected to your emotionality, right? Mm -hmm. So your emotional body. Um, and that's really, really important because a lot of the time, you know, we live in a world that's very physical, physical body, and now it's very mental body. Everyone's like, cool, we understand mindset. Um, and some people get the spirituals, but not a lot of people get the heart, right? Not realizing that our heart set is actually our emotional body. So yes. everything that happens to us on a physical level happen way back here. So it starts as a thought and then it's a feeling is produced and then a feeling produces thousands of thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that's going from, you know, a spiritual sense and then it goes into your emotional body, which is feeling, mental body, which is mental, and then it goes into a physical. There's like a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. I, this is what I do believe and I've proven this with what's happened in my life. Like nothing I've ever had that's happened physically, like when I broke my wrist, I can pinpoint exactly how that happened and why it happened because it happened back here. Yes. I know exactly why. Yes. Is this making sense, by the way? It is. I, and I love this breakdown too. It's it's super solid, like it's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I want everyone to be able to understand this. And if anyone has questions, by the way, you know, as I'm sharing this, if you guys want to reach out to me, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, you yeah, are more than welcome. Definitely. Um, and so then what happens is um, with our, uh, you know, our heart set, that's really also about, you know, understanding who we are and, you know, like things like, you know, speaking our truth and being kind to ourselves, forgiving ourselves, forgiving others, right? Then in our soul set, our soul set, which is, I know what Nash loves, is what I call like your intuition. Mm -hmm. Your soul set is your spirituality. It's your higher self, if you want to call it that. So for those of people who are like, higher self, what is that? So the way I describe this is we all have, I'm sure that everyone can agree, we all have two voices in our head. Mm -hmm. There's the positive and the negative. Or I call it the dark dog or the white dog. Mm -hmm. Or the lower self, the higher self. Yeah. The negative, the positive. To me, it's the same thing. Um, but the way I call it is lower self or higher self. Um, or the dark dog and, and the white dog seem to work really well because the way I describe it is you're feeding one or the other. Yes. And so imagine if you were feeding a dog, one dog, like let's say you're feeding the dark dog, the negativity. Mm. I suck, I'm fearful of this, scared of this, et cetera, et cetera. That dog's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the white dog is going to get really, really small and have a very 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 mm -hmm. quiet right yeah but when you flip it and you start feeding the white dog the more positive and you feed the dark dog less that voice is going to get a lot stronger and the other one's going to be a lot quieter yes so that's how i describe you know being in um a high vibe as well so it's tuning into um that inner voice and that positive voice and that inner knowing but you can't hear that inner knowing when your brain is a million miles an hour and you're like, oh my God, I've got to go here and I've got to do there and I've got to pick up the kids from school and I've got to make dinner and oh my God, like what does that person think of me? And oh my, like chatter, 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 which I used to have once upon a time. Mm -hmm. But now I don't, mm -hmm. which we can talk about. So in the last two elements is your mindset, right? So your mindset is so, so key, which is what we're leading into. You know, your mindset is about, you know, how do you condition yourself? Well, it's it's daily discipline and, and practices such as things like affirmations and things like incantations, which is, mm. you know, like when you're repeating a, a like a sentence or a phrase, the difference between like an affirmation like I am amazing, I am loved, I am positive, that can have no feeling, mm -hmm. whereas an incantation is, is a really powerful feeling. Yeah that you're repeating with it, you know, like even an affirmation like, you know, um, I am loved or yeah. like, you know, I am amazing. Like as an example, that's got a lot more feeling as opposed to I'm amazing. Yes, yes. So that's an incantation, uh -huh. right? So repeating these, you're conditioning your mind on a daily basis, which most people don't do. Yes. They don't know about it. Uh -huh. And then in your health set, again, your health set is more than just about what you're eating. Um, it's also about what you're saying, what you're listening to. It's also about, you know, like clearing out like toxins in your body, um, about being in a, alignment actually in a physical sense, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of those types of aspects. So there's, there's really key four elements that will really the five with the reset that get you into a higher vibe that you've really got to be implementing. And this is what I share in my Align program is, you know, I teach people how to get into that high vibe and we, we get there. And then the key is like, you know, um, staying in alignment, like me with my wrist recently, I got out of alignment, which it's normal. We all go in and out. That's okay. Yes. But I know exactly what to do to get me back into alignment and high vibe. 
I love that. Amazing. And such a great breakdown again. Um, so, so when you say alignment, Steph, does that just mean what feels true to you? Is that how, like, how do you kind of, cause I, I guess I'm very, um, I'm quite, um, like practical in, in, mm. in many senses. Um, and I, under, I understand what you're saying, but for anyone who has a similar mind to me where it's like, okay, mm. what does that actually look like? What does that mean? Good idea. Good question. What, is, what does alignment mean? How would I know if I'm in alignment? So alignment is when everything's just flowing easily and you feel so happy and you have what's called like enlightenment. So Dr. Um, David R. Hawkins talks about this amazing, amazing soul. Um, his books are incredible. Mm -hmm. And basically he talks about the different le levels of frequency with our emotions. So does Dr. Joe Dispenza. He talks about this as well. Yes. When we are living in things like um, a low vibration, which I've been there before, mm -hmm. things like shame and guilt and anger, they're a really low frequency. So they're like a 20 to a 40 frequency, right? Real mm -hmm. low. Yeah. And whenever we're living in fear and scarcity, by the way, who do we ever focus on? Mm -hmm. Ourselves. Yes. You physically do not have the capacity to focus on anyone else but yourself. You're in survival. Survival means food, shelter, uh, food and shelter and water. Like that's it, right? Yeah. That's like when I was depressed when I had my accident, I couldn't focus on anyone else but me. Like I was in survival. Yeah. Um, but once you start healing those and you start coming out of that, as you go up the frequency change, chain, sorry, yeah. love and joy are, I think from memory at about... Uh, a frequency of about 700 yes enlightenment which i've definitely felt before is about a frequency of a thousand so that's really awakened that's high consciousness that's when you've done a lot of inner work and healing yes something i want to share with everyone is there's nothing wrong with anyone we're perfect as we are but if you're human you definitely have wounds mm -hmm. that's normal and that's okay mm. but what you've got to do is work on healing that wound those wounds so if someone triggers you that means that you've actually got a wound that is yet to be healed. Mm -hmm. So as you keep healing yourself, you are triggered less and less and less and less. That's how you know the difference. So for me now, I very rarely get triggered like that. Oh, you know that, oh, what, you know, every now and then I still do because I'm human. I'm still growing. Of course. But when you get to that enlightenment, it's, it's, a, it's an energy, it's a frequency. And so the difference is which, with what Dr. Dr. Joe Dispenza says, and I'll come back to what you're saying that, asking. Mm -hmm. When you're in this lower frequency of, let's say, get, um, guilt, shame, fear, you're what you call more matter, which is more physical body, which is heavier. So when you're depressed, you're slow, you're heavy. Yes. You can't be bothered. Yes. Ugh. It's very heavy, right? Yeah. When you're in enlightenment and you're in love, if you know people that are high energy, that are in love, that are spreading joy and happiness, they're not heavy, they're not slow, yeah. they're not tired. You have this... Well, I can't describe it. It's like this energy that comes through you that just comes out of nowhere. And yeah. the reasoning being is the higher your frequency, the more energy that you're tapped into and you become more energy and less matter. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's the difference. And so in, a, in alignment, you will know when you're in alignment because those four key elements you're working on, your, your emotional body you're working on with your heart, you're in tune with your heart, you've forgiven yourself, you've forgiven others, right? You've released resentment, you've released judgment. In your soul set, you're connected to something more than yourself, whether it's God, the universe, Allah, Buddha, energy, whatever it is. To me, it's the same thing. So yeah. I, I, I do believe that there is definitely something. So it's connected to your, it's connected to yourself. It means you don't care what someone else thinks. It's like you stand in your power. You know who you are. You're like, you know, um, that's your soul set connected to your inner voice, that guidance that you don't doubt. All day long, we're given little things like call this person, smile at that older lady as she walks across the road, uh -huh. you know, do this. That's your higher self. And the difference on how to know what's your higher self and lower self is your higher self will always come for, for good. Uh -huh. It's always coming from love and goodness and yeah. kindness. It's not selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not about the self. It's not about, oh, a win for me and a lose for you. Mm -hmm. That's ego. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third element is obviously, you know, your mental body. So you're working on your mindset, you're exercising, you know, you're thinking positively um, and then your, your health set. So you're eating well, you know, you're feeding your body, you know, nutritious food. Food has frequency. Food is frequency too. So when you're in true alignment and you're in a high vibe, those four key elements are in alignment and everything, I'm sure that people know what I'm relating to. There's certain periods in your life where you probably don't realize that you're doing it. 
but everything flows. Like you start to manifest things into your life, you know, like you attract the right relationship, you attract the right job. Um, but for most people, sometimes what happens is you self-sabotage eventually mm-hmm. because of the deep-seated beliefs that we were talking about earlier. Yes. And you don't believe that you're worthy of it, right? Mm-hmm. And so alignment to me is when you're in true power, you know who you are, everything is easy, everything is flowing, and you're so happy and joyous. That's true alignment. I love that. Wow, wow, wow. So many questions. My goodness, you're, you're, my mind is just going on a tangent now. You got me going. I don't think I've asked you any questions I wanted to ask you, which is awesome because this is, this is from the heart. This is real. Um, I, I love the, the, what you said about the, the lower vibration um, emotions weigh, actually making you heavier, like actually weighing you down. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed is the more I work on myself and the more I step into what I feel is my true purpose here on earth, I naturally want to give up things like like recently I've I've quit coffee, which was like so I've given up alcohol. I used to drink a lot of alcohol. Same. Coming from a, a, a you know military construction, those two things it was a real culture for alcohol, and I was hooked. Overeating, video games, all these things, and recently coffee. I've, I've gone on a coffee fast for almost sixty days now, um, but I want to give up those things simply because they just feel heavy. And it's not like I'm trying to give them up. It's not effort. It's actually just like I just detach from them. It's like you don't need them. And it, it's interesting when you were talking about that, um, those heavier emotions. It's like I remember eating in the past, or eat, overeat, overeat. It was almost like I was trying to get heavier because I was, I was, I don't know, that, that was what came into my mind. It was like I was trying to, it was familiar maybe. And so I'd eat more to stay in that familiar emotion because the, mm, the mind does yeah. love what's familiar. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's really interesting. I, I love that. Just just on that, um, which is a really good point, I'm glad that you mentioned this, Nash. Yeah, so the more, see, the, the more that you start to know who you are and you step into your power and you step into your truth, what starts to happen is you do start to love yourself more. Mm. So same thing with you. Um, so a lot of you know that I shared earlier on about, you know, taking drugs and, and alcohol and um, I've now been sober for eight eight months now. So uh, same as you, Nash. And that was like, oh, I was playing ping pong for so long. But what I did was I kind of not shut myself off from the world, but I just didn't put myself in that environment where um, I was around people that kept encouraging me. It got to a point where I knew I'm like, oh, I'm good now. I've given it up for like two, three months and I'm not going to be affected. Yeah. Um, and I, I would look at people that I aspired to be like, and I'm like, hmm, they don't drink alcohol. Yeah. Okay, so maybe there's a bit of a link here, right? Um, And, yeah, we have to be mindful because there's always other habits that we can fall back into. Um, But what starts to happen is like what you're saying, Nash, is the more that you start to love yourself, the more that you know that you're worthy um, and the more that you are stepping into that power, yet you don't need things like drugs or alcohol or sex addiction or, Mm. you know, overeating or like video games or watching too much TV. Like you no longer have that need right and we all go through you know phases of up and down like we're human um again there's no no perfect human i think if there was no polarity you know i know for me like i was on such a high crazy crazy high and then i did my happen with my wrist and i knew i needed to slow down but i'm like being gentle on myself realizing that you know what what goes down comes back up and i always say when i'm in like an incubation period. So I want everyone to know if you're going through this incubation period, sometimes you get pulled back, but you're like a slingshot and then you just come out firing even more. If you allow yourself to realize and ask yourself, you know, like, what is this trying to teach me? What is this lesson? What is this learning? And when you realize that being gentle on yourself and realizing, cool, I'm going to come out the other side. It's okay. Um, but what I wanted to share with you about what you were talking about with matter. Mm-hmm. So Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about this. It's called, um, you know, thinking, bi- uh, sorry, thinking, doing, being. Mm-hmm. So there's three steps for any time that we want to have a change in our life. So um, as an example, I don't know if you can hear the birds. I have birds that come to my house, by the way. So yeah, you're a bird whisperer. That was the other thing I forgot to mention. <laughs> I'm like, I can hear the birds. I'm like, oh my goodness, they're back. Wait a um, and just on that, they do say that you have to have, well, not you have to have, but if animals are attracted to you, it means you have positive energy. So I was like, oh, that's amazing. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. I believe it. So thinking, being, and doing. So let's say like when we all try and drive, this is an easy one for everyone. I'm sure most people listening to this have driven a car before. Mm-hmm. Before you start driving, you actually have to think, I'm like, cool, I want to learn to drive, Right. And then what happens is you get in the car and you physically have to like fully be thinking, I need to put 
the the gear in you know it into gear or put it in drive or like you know I need to take down the handbrake and except you're really thinking about what you're doing I need to yep. stop at the stop sign yes and then what starts to happen is eventually it starts to become part of like doing which means like like all of a sudden you know like you no longer have to consciously be so be thinking about it so much it starts to happen that you just start doing it Mm-hmm. right you you it, it's it's part of you now i'm sure that most people can relate how many people have been driving and have not been thinking about where they're going and have either gone to the wrong place or gotten to a place and you're like oh my goodness i did not even think about what i was doing or you're having a conversation with your kids in the back or you're talking to someone and you're like oh my goodness we are here <laughs> i wasn't even thinking yep yep for sure because it's become part of your being now Mm-hmm. So that's the same with anything like when you were talking about Nash with video games or like, you know, comfort eating or whatever it is that we do. Mm-hmm. Eventually when you start changing those practices, you consciously started thinking about it first. Like you were like, oh, I was going to do that video game, but you know what? I'm not actually going to touch that today. I'm going to do this instead. Mm-hmm. And that's how you start to reform a habit. So if anyone that's wanting to change a habit, think, be, sorry, think, do be. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, like the only way to change anything is you actually consciously have to stop yourself. Like if you're going to, let's pretend this is Coke. I'm picking up a glass right now, guys, for anyone listening, not watching. Yep. But let's say if it's Coke and you're used to grabbing Coke or chocolate, you need to stop yourself and be like, hang on, I'm going to have a glass of Coke or mm-hmm. I'm about to grab this. Think about it. Why do I specifically want this? Oh, I don't. It's just an unconscious habit. Okay, cool. I'm not going to get that. I'm going to get the water instead. Uh-huh. That's how you change a habit. Yes. Yes. I love that. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Wow. Wow. So speaking of habits, speaking of habits, what have been, and obviously you're doing this work where you are, you're living and breathing all this stuff, hence the incredible transformation you've had. But apart from obviously being very mindful and deliberate how you're living, what are some other habits that you've developed? So past, so I, I, would, I would assume that you would have been around 19 or so when you had kind of this awakening when you saw the, the runners when i saw the the run yeah i was uh, yeah i was probably actually about that age yeah i yeah. would say 18 i think maybe it was 18 and then i think i had that other one when i was in the yeah no it was probably yeah about 18 yeah 18. yeah so what would what's so different like the, the habits obviously you've given up drinking and other things like that but what do you do now that's really you feel has made such a profound difference in your life as far as habits like daily habits yeah so um like i've exercised since i was like properly at a gym since i was 15 so i'm 32 now Uh um that's always been a habit that i've always definitely lived by and and one thing i want to share with everyone is you know the quickest way to change how you feel is to move your body so emotion comes from motion if you want to change the way that you feel you must move your body so tony robbins talks about i mean he's my broken hand here, but the triad. So I'm holding up a triangle for anyone who's listening. So in that triad, we have three different elements. So the first side is focus and belief. The second element is language. The third element is physiology. So if you're wanting to change how you feel, the quickest way to change how you feel is to change your physiology instantaneously. That's go for a run, go for a bike ride, go for a walk, dance to some music, jump on a rebounder, go for a swim, whatever it is, it's physiology. Or jump in a cold shower, that's a quick way to change your physiology. But if you're wanting to fully have, you know, like a deep change, it's changing all three, which is your focus and your belief, your language pattern and your physiology. If you change your physiology first, you will find that you'll straight away shift your focus and your language pattern will change. Yes. But if you're trying to just change what you're focusing on initially or your language pattern, it's it may work, but the strongest one, physiology is 55%. Um, language pattern is 38, 38%, right? So like this, the quickest way to change yourself is your physiology. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to, to daily habits. So my biggest thing is that what changed my life is one, definitely having a coach and being around, you know, like-minded souls. Mm-hmm. Um, but really being, you know, like, especially through the week, Monday to Friday, getting up at the same time every day and setting yourself like a routine of no matter how you feel Monday to Friday or whatever, you know, however you work, uh, your week works, um, getting up at the same time. And Mel Robbins talks about the five, four, three, two, one technique. Mm. So I don't sleep with my phone in my room anymore. It's I sleep with it outside my door. That also I've studied, um, that says that it can affect our, we are an energetic being. It can affect our, our energy center. Mm -hmm. Um, so I sleep with it outside my room and it also, you know, as soon as my alarm goes off, that means I get up out of bed. Yes. The five, four, three, two, one, getting out of bed at the same time every day. 
Um, and for me, definitely getting into a high vibe, it is doing things like going for a run or going and working out and then doing things like having a cold shower. Mm. That's the way for me to get truly into a um, a very, very focused high energy. That's the quickest way that I'll do it and yelling out incantations while I'm running. Mm. So, um, you know, Tony Robbins, I love Tony Robbins, but some of his ones that I've learned about that I will share with you, you know, like he has an incantation and I say it all the time. You know, um, God's wealth is circulating in my life. It flows to me in avalanches of abundance. Oh, my God, needs desires of it instantaneously by infinite intelligence for I'm one with God and God is everything. Mm, I love it. Now, love it. when I yell at those going running, um, it's very, very powerful. But I want to also remind everyone that what I'm sharing with you is quite a masculine energy. Mm. And this is something that I've been very mindful of recently in my oh, life. Interesting. And I've been going through this phase of transition of bringing more of my feminine into my life. Mm -hmm. So I also want everyone to know is you can have both sides and the key in life is to balance both, mm -hmm. but knowing when to bring out what sides of you. So mm -hmm. sometimes with my feminine, which maybe is more so on a weekend, I'll allow myself to just be, you know, I'll wake up and be like, what do I feel like doing today? Um, and it'll be like writing it like today. It was like writing my gratitude list, reading some something positive, going and working out, um, putting onto some music before I was on here. Um, or like sometimes having a bath, you know, like having a bath and putting candles on even in the morning, you know. Mm. Um, mm. But it's being mindful about, you know, what what um, side of you needs to show up today and, and um, honouring those parts of yourself. And that's something I think is really important that a lot of, you know, leaders in this space don't really talk about mm. is balance. Um, and I think for a lot of people, it's because a lot of people are so on the probably the feminine, which is the, mm. just the being. Yep. <laughs> and yep. we need a little bit of a kick up the butt sometimes to get us into action. But, you know, knowing when you've got that discipline, like the, the key thing for anything is having discipline. Yes. And if you can have that Monday to Friday at least, that's always going to help you stay in a high vibrational frequency and being around like-minded individuals. Yes, I love that. I love that. And that, you know, that discipline can be a really interesting time for people, hence why the obviously we do the work we do where we help people make that transition, bridge that gap from, from what they've done for so long, what's, what's old and familiar and step into the unknown because it, as you step, you're going to be flooded with all these, <clears throat> you know, old, you're going to be flooded with every reason why you can't do it. Your, your mind will try and stop you because it loves the familiar. Um, and I, I know so many great people who have had incredible dreams who have been derailed by those voices of negativity or um, the little things that show up. Because it, I've noticed this, I'm not sure if you've noticed this as well, Steph, when you go to do something new, it's like life almost tests you. It puts something in your way and it's like, are you, oh, yes. are you really committed? <laughs> Have you noticed that as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. Whenever I've done master classes and I've had, you know, like almost 100 people on them or whatever, yeah. and the first time I'm doing them and I'm like, I want to have everything perfect, something goes wrong. Yeah. Like one time I was like over, like, you know, over organized and uh, Zoom was sending out emails to everyone on its own, but I wanted to be go above and beyond and email everyone individually. And I accidentally sent them like a link that was like a dead link. So I had a hundred people oh, try nice. to log in <laughs> and then I've got people messaging me and I was like, oh my goodness, that is the universe testing me. But it's like, you know, like, okay, you've got this, like, what are you going to be like when you're on stage and you've got something that happens in the sound yeah. system goes like, what are you going to do then? So you got to just, you know, I just roll with it and just say, guys, this is life. This is normal. And I just, you know, as much as I can dust myself off and realize that, you know, the people that are there are there and that this is a test. I love that. Amazing. Um, so we, we better wind this up shortly, but I, I've got a question. I ask this to all my guests and it is, this is probably very relevant, you know, given what every, all the changes and shifts that are happening in the world right now. Um, but if you were to have access to the back end of Facebook, Instagram, all the major platforms in the world, and you could, you had two minutes, two minutes to share a message with the world, no pressure. What would you, what would you share with people? Well, I would definitely say that um, gratitude is the antidote to fear. Gratitude is the fastest way for anyone to raise their frequency and vibration. Mm -hmm. When you come from gratitude, you have no expectation. You trade expectation for appreciation. So having gratitude every single day for every single thing in your life is key to raising the vibration of the freak of the planet. Also that we are all connected, whether mm -hmm. we like it or not. 
Some people do, some people don't. Everything is energy. If I came here and I was angry today, Nash, you would feel that. The people listening would feel my anger. Mm -hmm. So that goes to show you we are actually energetic beings connected. So that means that we are all connected as a collective across the world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are all responsible how, for how we show up every single day. And what that means is that every single day we should be choosing to have courage, choosing to have faith, choosing to come from a place of love, choosing to come from a place of joy and passion and happiness and gratitude. And when we come from that place and we are responsible for ourselves, we will collectively raise the vibration of the planet. Mm, I love that. That is that is gold. Amazing, amazing. One, one last question, and this really goes, you know, it, it's going backward a little bit, but just for anyone who's watching this, who, you know, a business owner, um, even a parent, someone who's got a lot of responsibility, they have to be, they have to be driven, they have to be on the go. You spoke about the feminine masculine energies already, but can people do this work, this, this energetic work and step into this um, and still be driven? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and so one thing I want to also share, especially as a female, if you are a parent, um, or like a female in general, you know, we've lived in a world very much that has made men feel emasculated, which is like, you know, we as females can do it all now as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to be mindful that, you know, um, to allow men to step into their masculine and for, you know, us to drop um, uh, our energy, not our energy, but like rather um, allow people to help us. It's okay to have help is what I want to say. Um, but for a female, especially, um, you know, like well, males as well, um, we need to make sure that we cultivate time every single day for ourselves. Yes. So, you know, especially if you're a parent or someone who's got a really, really busy life, you know, someone like a Tony Robbins who's got 50 companies who's traveling all around the world still manages to have time to set himself up for the day ahead. Like you have 15 minutes. Yes. So, you know, one thing that I would say is even as a parent, it's, it's getting up that half an hour earlier, even half an hour where you will write a gratitude list and you might do five minutes of a meditation and you might um, do a visualization or you might just go for a quick walk. Like mm -hmm. half an hour, you can do stuff in that. You could do three things. You Again, expressing gratitude, a meditation or a quick visualization or putting some form of music on to change your state and a little bit of exercise that's going to help anyone. So that's yeah. where I would say that for anyone to start, like gratitude, one thing I didn't mention, but gratitude changed my life. I did 365 days of a video every single day um, and wrote gratitude. I still write gratitude lists to this day. Yes. Gratitude is what will start to raise your frequency because you'll start to appreciate all the little things and you'll stop focusing on what you don't have and what's wrong in your life and you'll start appreciating, appreciating what you do have. Yes, I love that. I love that. I totally agree. I actually get my coaching clients when they begin working with me to send their gratitudes into me every single day. I'm like, I want my phone lit up with your gratitudes every single day. Um, so I, I totally understand what you're saying and it is so powerful. Um, and I, I love the, the work you're doing, Steph, because it's adding a, such a dimension to people's lives as in so many people are just in the, in the, in the hustle or in the grind, uh, but they're not tapping into this and really leveraging what's available. You know, they're trying to create a, a, a new future with old mindsets, old patterns of being. And even the great people out there who've got amazing dreams, things that they want to achieve, things that they want to contribute, but they just can't do it because it's like a handbrake. There's something, an anchor tying them back to the past, mm. you know, these feelings of thoughts, beliefs. So I, I love the work you're doing. It's absolutely incredible. On that note, what can, what can people do to get amongst everything you've got going on? Where would you love people to check you out more? Um, what platforms are you most active on? Share it all with us. Beautiful. So um, first and foremost, anyone can access and contact me directly through my website. So, you know, I am Stephanie Z. Uh, dot com so z e e i am stephanie z dot com um you'll be able to access me there you can um, send me a message or you can book in a discovery call um happy to do that um i am probably most active on facebook um as well so stephanie z i am a public facing facebook page so you can direct message me you can comment on my stuff um as well that's that's really fun and um uh, Instagram. So um, I would probably say they're the two main platforms, but definitely a website and um, and Facebook would be the best way to go. I love and it. Um, yeah, we'll be having another round of vibe coming up um, in September, which is really exciting. So six week program, low vibe to high vibe. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I also have my um, aligned program, which is following on from that, which is my 12 month program. 
Um, and for certain select people, um, some people come to me for, you know, they want to recreate their belief system, which I do um, do one-on-ones with breakthroughs. So deep inner transformation um, mm. for select people. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I'm, I'm sure like you've delivered so much on this podcast as well. So many valuable tools. I can only imagine what those sessions must be like with you. That'd be absolutely transformational. I, I fully believe that. Amazing, Steph. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for jumping on. And is there anything you want to share with our with the audience just before we, we sign off today? Uh, the one thing that I would probably just say is, you know, just live your life. You, Everybody has a million dollar idea. Everybody has, you know, a, a, a purpose. Everybody has an inner knowingness, you know, um, start, you know, like following that inner voice, start trusting that intuition, start trusting your higher self and that inner voice and that guidance. And, you know, if you're drawn to certain people, um, you know, surround yourself with those people. Um, you know, something that I always say is, you know, and, you know, God's source created the universe. Please, please bring people closer to me who are here for my highest and best and humanity's highest and best. Mm. And please remove those people from my life who are not here for my highest and best and humanity's highest and best. It was really amazing to start to see what happens in your life. You don't even have to do anything because everything is energy and frequency. And, and if you're feeling an urge, like let's say right now you're listening to this and you're like, wow, I really want to connect with Steph. Message me. Mm. Don't allow that inner voice to be like, oh, no, she probably won't want to hear from me or like, oh, I want to chat to Nat, Nash about something. Like if you've got this urge and this this pull like that's that's an energy within you that's like the go button yes but a lot of the time we don't go or we'll like jump on and do a live oh, i've just listened to this podcast with nash and staff oh wow i was really inspired by this or do a live or whatever it is tell your friend about it or something or just have this realization like if you're being given that like surge of energy that's the time to go mm. um for anything or like i've got this idea like go um as soon as you don't use that force of energy that comes through it'll disappear so that's what i would say